By the grace of God, we are here for worship. Welcome to this time of praise and strengthening with One United Church of Christ. As always, the bulletin that goes with today's service is found online at the podcast section of our website at www.oneucc.org. It's also included in the weekly church email that gets shared onto Facebook every Thursday. We invite you to find that bulletin, download it, read through it. There's information about reopening, about at-home vacation Bible school, how to find the July-August church newsletter, and other exciting things. So please take a moment to read through the bulletin for the service. Please note that on today, July 5th, there is no drive-up prayer and blessing at 1130 because even though you see me and hear me, I'm really on vacation. Also, thank you for the many ways that you're continuing your support of our ministry, sending in financial contributions, sending in words of encouragement, showing up to be the church in many ways. Thank you for all the ways that you are serving Jesus in this time. The hearts behind us continue to be kept current in memory of those in Pennsylvania who have died from COVID-19. While the situation continues to improve here, we know it's not elsewhere. And so much prayer is needed for all who are suffering, for all who have died and the people who love them, that we may heal, and for all of those who are taking care of the community. Keep praying, friends. Also, for today's service, you will need a container of water, big enough to put your hand in, and some communion elements. We are having virtual communion again. So find something that you can set your home table with, whatever kind of bread product, water, wine, juice, whatever you have on hand for communion. So I invite you to hit pause on however you're taking part in the service today and get water and get some bread products and juice products for communion. People of God, we are here for worship to remember our most central identity. We are God's beloved claimed and called by a love that's everlasting and all-encompassing. And so gathered here in the love of the Holy One, in the redemption of the risen one, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us praise God now. When we have committed to Jesus' way, our most central identity is that of God's beloved. Through baptism, we are claimed with this identity and make promises to live it out in certain ways. At this moment, if you have a container of water with you, I invite you to get it out and place your hand or your fingers in it. As you feel the water, remember your baptism Remember the commitment you made to follow in Jesus' way. Whether someone made that for you at your baptism, whether you made it for yourself at confirmation, or another time that you made that choice. If you have yet to be baptized, I invite you to think about what it would be like to make such a commitment to Jesus. Our prayer of confession today is guided by our baptismal vows. As we pray, you may wish to consider keeping your hand in the water, to remember both the claim and the calling baptism gives us. Do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? Holy God, we desire to be part of your family, to belong to a community larger than ourselves and grounded in your life-giving love. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? We want to cast off the influence of evil so that we can be rooted in your life-giving way of life. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? 
While we profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior with our words, the ways we live and the behaviors we exhibit fail to honor our commitment to Jesus. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. We try to follow in Jesus' way, but we stray. Rather than resisting oppression and evil, we make excuses and offer defenses for the things of our world that diminish the lives of others. We seek to show love and justice, yet when doing so is risky and unpopular, we grow apathetic. While we have promised to witness to the work and word of Jesus as best we are able, we know we could be doing a better job at embodying the example Christ laid for us. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? Holy God, when we fail to grow in our faith and our connection with you, forgive us. When we consider church a religiously themed social club designed to make us feel good or meet our spiritual needs, rather than a transformative community where we grow in faith, hope, and love, forgive us. By reminding us again of who and whose we are through baptism, help us grow into disciples who actively celebrate Christ's presence and further his mission of love and justice in all the world. Amen. of God, we are God's beloved. Through baptism, that identity is given shape and purpose. Through baptism, we are promised forgiveness for the times when our discipleship goes astray. Each time you touch water, remember this truth. You are God's beloved, loved with an everlasting, all-encompassing love. We are forgiven that which needs to be forgiven, we receive grace to start again. For this we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, may we pray. Holy God, help us to hear your voice today. In your words, we pray to hear who we are in you and how you desire us to live. Amen. Sometimes in our lives, we need to be reminded of who we are. Stress, change, chaos can cause us to lose touch with ourselves, and even more, with whom God is calling us to be. Throughout July and August, we are spending time together remembering who we are as Christians, as one united Church of Christ. Today, we start at the beginning with baptism, the most significant moment of claim, identity, and calling for anyone who follows Jesus. And we start with the story of Jesus' own baptism, as found within the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter, verses 21 through 22. Listen for the word of God. When everyone was being baptized, Jesus also was baptized. While he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven, you are my son, who I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And 
Take me to the In everyone's life are spaces that deeply help us take stock of where we've come from, who we've been, how far we've gone, how much we've grown. Spaces that help us truly remember who we are. For some, this space might be a beloved summer camp or a treasured vacation spot we return to year after year. For others, such a space might be an event like a hometown carnival or an annual convention. For me, one such space is the sanctuary of my home church, Glade UCC in Walkersville, Maryland. As much as I believe a church is definitely not a building, it's powerful to be in this sacred space where I worship God growing up, a sanctuary my father and aunt grew up in, a sanctuary my grandparents chose for their home church. This is the space where I discovered the power of Christian community, where I was baptized and confirmed, the space in which I literally heard my call to ministry, the space that hosted my ordination and my wedding. Yet one recent moment in Glade Sanctuary helped me take stock of where I came from, how much I've grown, and who God has shaped me to be. Two summers ago, when Glade was between pastors, the congregation invited me to come back and guest preach one Sunday. As they were without a pastor, they also asked if I would consider doing two baptisms for a family who wanted their children baptized. I immediately agreed because baptism is one of the best parts about this vocation and because it is a rare gift in a pastor's life to baptize someone from the same font from which you were baptized. So that Sunday, as I baptized these two beautiful children using the same font that held my baptismal waters, 
I thought about all the other pastors who had baptized from this font, all the other people I watched being baptized by them. My brother, who, like me, was baptized in his teens. The kids I taught in Sunday school long ago. Church friends, the son of one of my dearest lifelong friends. As I poured water over these children's heads, I wondered what their faith journeys would hold. When I was baptized at almost 15, I never imagined I'd be a pastor. I couldn't imagine myself married or a mom or living outside of Maryland. Yet here I was, the Reverend Hoover, pastor, wife, mother, aunt, blue-haired at the time, Pennsylvanian. If God had done all that in my life, what surprises would the Holy Spirit reveal in these children's paths? All of our paths following Jesus begin at the font. Maybe you were baptized from one of these fonts behind me. Maybe your children or grandchildren, other relatives, kids you taught in Sunday school, or church friends were. Whether you were baptized from one of these fonts or another font in another place or a font you don't even remember, our journeys with Jesus begin at the water. If you haven't been baptized yet, I pray this message may help you reflect on what place the sacrament may hold in your journey. Baptism is a touchstone moment in our lives, revealing who and whose we are. Each time we watch someone be baptized, the moment becomes a holy space, helping us take deep stock of our lives and our discipleship. The practice of baptism comes directly from a moment in Jesus' life. Our scripture reading today is the story of that moment. Toward the beginning of each one of the Gospels, adult Jesus shows up out of the blue, appearing down by the Jordan River, seeking baptism. He enters into the waters of the Jordan, and in each Gospel reemerges to some manifestation of the Holy Spirit, to some sort of divine affirmation and claim. Once baptized, Jesus enters the wilderness to be tempted. We heard about that last week. And only after baptism does Jesus begin his public ministry. Significantly, before Jesus does a single thing in his ministerial career, before he says a single word, avoids a single temptation, heals a single person, performs a single miracle, before he does anything at all, a voice from heaven calls down this blessing upon him, you are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. Based not on his accomplishments or successes, based not on his wisdom or abilities, but based solely on who he is, standing empty-handed, vulnerable, and drenching wet before God, does the Holy One declare that Jesus is God's beloved in whom God finds happiness. These words are everything. They are confirmation of Jesus' identity and prediction of his destiny. They are a consecrating of who he is and all he will become. They are a touchstone. They are a promise. They are a lifeline. They are a deliverance. In moments when Jesus was overwhelmed or angry, in moments when he despaired and wondered if all his work was accomplishing anything, in seasons when everything changed, in times when the devil was his only company, when he hung alone on the cross, these words remained, you are my beloved, in you I find happiness. These words held him, challenged him, strengthened him, and blessed him. Our baptisms aren't that much different from Jesus's, really. The heavens might not be torn open. A dove might not descend on us. A voice might not call down from heaven. But a voice does rise up from the community witnessing the baptism, from the clergy person officiating the baptism, from the ancient rhythms of the baptismal liturgy, from the splashing of the water, all affirming that the one being baptized is God's beloved in whom God finds happiness. For all who are baptized... These words hold us, 
challenge us, strengthen us, and bless us. They become touchstone, promise, lifeline, and deliverance for us, too. These words are everything. When we've been marked by the waters, we promise to live by Jesus' example, loving the things that he loves, valuing the things that he values, sacrificing our preferences, opinions, resources, heads, hearts, time, passion to something larger than ourselves. We are asked to resist oppression and evil, to love the least, to value the overlooked, to respect all people regardless of ethnicity, political beliefs, and societal standing. We are expected to love God with our first and best energy and then love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus teaches us to offer grace in place of judgment, to practice reconciliation and peacemaking, to share with those who have less of whatever has been, we've been given stewardship over, to care for our bodies, minds, and souls because we are God's beloved and if we're not well, we can't make the world well. Baptism sets us on a path that is not easy. It's much easier and more primally satisfying to return curse for curse, punch for punch, to look out for our best interests and our own people. But baptism leads to the most life-giving, the most authentic and whole way of life I know. In times like right now, when life is stressful and overwhelming and everything is changing, remembering back to who we really are is crucial. That's why we're spending this summer remembering who we are as followers of Jesus Christ and as one united church of Christ. In our faith, we have a common space that helps us take stock of where we've come from and who we've been, how far we've gone and how much we've grown, a space that helps us remember who we are and who we may yet become. Such remembering at a time like this is empowering and life-giving. Remembering who we are starts with baptism. In the words of the baptismal liturgy, in the words of the scripture we heard today, we're told exactly who we are. We are God's beloved. Before any other identity we hold, before our relational identities, our ethnic identities, our socioeconomic, educational, political, professional, geographical identities, before any affinity we hold or fandom we subscribe to or survivor status we've achieved, underneath any mask we wear, we are God's beloved. From this identity, we can bear any success or failure any hardship or accomplishment, any struggle or joy, we are God's beloved. Through every life change, through every heartbreak, we are God's beloved. Through every disappointment, every mistake, we are God's beloved. Nothing we can do will ever change that. Nothing anyone can do to us will ever change that either. We are first and foremost, God's beloved. Friends in Christ, I pray that each of us knows to the core of our souls, to the marrow of our bones, who we truly are. We are God's beloved, in whom God finds happiness. This is the truth of our existence that brings us meaning, transformation, and hope. Friends, you are God's beloved, and in you, God finds happiness. May these words echo through your heads, your hearts, and your souls, today and in all the time ahead. Amen and amen.
Here at this table, we are invited more deeply into the presence and life of Jesus Christ. Through the power and mystery of the Holy Spirit, we touch what Jesus touched. We are fed by his body and with his life. We are given tangible signs of God's gracious love. These signs, this sacrament, is for everyone. Come to the table to remember who we are. Come to this moment to remember and be renewed. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Most holy and sustaining God, we give you thanks and praise for your movement in our lives and in the world throughout time. You called creation into being and structured it so as to nourish life, bringing forth bread from the earth and the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, claimed us as your beloved people, and made covenant with us to be our God. In holy love and reconciliation, you seek us still. We give you thanks for the gift and call of your son, Jesus Christ. In his healing touch, through his stirring teachings, within his extravagant welcome, in his sacrificial love, through his obedient death, and within his triumphant resurrection, you boldly reveal your realm has come near. As we live in this almost but not yet time, we rejoice in the power and presence of your Holy Spirit among us. You continue to nurture us and equip us to proclaim the inbreaking hope of your kingdom. Lead us, O God, by your spirit in ever more faithful and powerful service. All glory and honor, blessing and power be unto you as we pray in the words Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Whenever we gather at this table, we always remember a story together. It's a story that reveals that Jesus is God's beloved in whom God finds happiness. It's a story that reveals that we are Jesus' beloved, in whom he finds happiness. For on the last night of his life, as he was gathered at table with his friends, in the course of the meal they were sharing, he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And in the same fashion, he took a cup. And again, giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, this cup is a cup of the new covenant shed for you and for many in my blood. It is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Once again, may we pray. Holy God of mystery and might, we pray you would send your spirit upon this bread, this cup, and this community. Make all of this, all of us, more than we are now. Through this bread, nourish us with the presence of Christ who brings us, those separate, together in one body. Through this cup, free us by your life to work for justice, peace, and flourishing of life in our corners of the world. Day by day, shape us into your holy people who serve you with joy and boldness. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ, broken in love for all of us. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, shed in love for all of us. Take and drink.
having received the gifts of Jesus Christ, may we pray our prayer of thanksgiving together. Holy One, we thank you for the signs of grace we have tasted and touched and for the promises they hold. From them, may we receive the strength and courage to live as your beloved people. We pray you would send us out into the world once again to be Christ's disciples, resisting oppression and evil, showing love and justice, and witnessing to the work and word of Jesus Christ as fully as we are able. Amen.
We are God's beloved. Nothing and no one can ever change that. By the calling and grace of baptism, may we go today strengthened by the love of God to follow in the way of our Savior, resisting oppression and evil, showing love and justice, and witnessing to the work, word, and love of Jesus Christ in all the ways we are able. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit go with us, equipping us and strengthening us today and in every tomorrow. Amen.